वेलकम टू डेंटल एंड आयुर्वेदा अ चैनल फॉर बेसिक डेंटल एंड आयुर्वेदिक साइंसेस आर टुडेज चैप्टर इज एच हेलो एवरीवन सो द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टुडे इज एच आई दीज आर रेट्रो वायरसेस एंड टॉपिक्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अंडर दिस आर मॉर्फोलॉजी about its mode of transmission clinical features oral manifestations lab diagnosis prevention and prophylaxis so all these terms we will be studying under hiv and hiv is these are basically rna viruses it produces dna copy of rna genome in host cell and the key feature for hiv is the presence of reverse transcriptase so about the morphology so morphology if i talk about these are spherically shaped and enveloped viruses with 90 to 120 mm diameter and nucleocapsid around the core and the spikes on the surface and about mode of transmission they have three mode of transmission first is sexual mode of transmission which is very important and the second is parenteral which occurs through the blood during infected blood transfusions contaminated syringes etc and second is perinatal from a infected mother to her child then about clinical features hiv infect all the cells you know they they are going to infect all the cells which have cd4 antigen on their surface so if i talk about the classification of hiv infection so classification first is acute so here you can see acute onset of fever skin rashes then second is asymptomatic where the infected person you know he seems usually well and third is persistent generalized lymph adenopathy where there are enlarged lymph nodes then the fourth is symptomatic and aids is the last stage of hiv infection so in symptomatic you know when cd4 uh, plus t4 lymphocyte count it falls below 400 per mm cube so this is the about symptomatic then we have oral manifestations so here patients with aids you know they are more prone to all that fungal and viral infections and acute necrotizing gingivitis also indicates aids so in fact in fact herpes simplex infection these all are the oral manifestations of this virus then angular cheilitis and ulcer at the corner of mouth and you know in uh, infected patients who are infected with hiv so they may have candidiasis also then we talk about lab diagnosis so here we do specific tests for hiv first is antigen detection then virus isolation that we do and detection of viral nucleic acid we, we do this by pcr and antibody detection also we do and this is the simplest way and it it may take months or weeks but yeah this is the simplest test then we have some of the screening tests elisa which is the most important method and we may, we have heard it we have heard about it earlier also then we have rapid tests so these rapid tests are basically they take less than 30 minutes rapid test if i talk about and in this rapid test it includes dot blot assay particle agglutination hiv spot and other like com tests also so these are the rapid tests and then we have simple tests that we do like this takes around 1 to 2 hours and it does not require any expensive instruments then we have some sub- supplemental tests so these supplemental tests first comes your western blot test so this is done by gel electrophoresis where you you are going to separate the hiv proteins and blot them in, on strips of nitrocellular paper then these strips you are going to react with the test sera and if like if the antibodies to hiv proteins they are present in serum okay so if the antibodies to hiv proteins if these are present in serum then they are going to combine with different fragments of hiv and when they are going to combine with different fragments of hiv you know 
this occurs this is all about western blot test and we cannot consider any positive result any one positive result we cannot consider for screening any one screening on the basis of any one screening you cannot consider a test as positive then you have hiv infected cells they are you know on glass slides we are going to fix these cells infected cells and this method is known as indirect immunofluorescence test and then we react it with serum followed by fluorescein conjugated anti human gamma globulin and then apple green fluorescence if it appears then you can say that the test is positive if there is the color of apple green fluorescence if you can see there then you can confirm that the test is positive then you have some non specific test under this comes your tlc and dlc total lymphocyte count and differential lymphocyte count then in aids there is leukopenia this is present and t lymphocyte subset assays we are also do that so normal cd4 cd8 and t cells ratio is like 2 is to 1 is reversed to 0.5 in aids so these are some indications of aids also then we are going to talk about after this we are going to talk about preventions like what all preventions we must take to for hiv so first is that you know any contaminated syringes they must not be shared so the syringes and everything we have to take care about and all the blood products they should be screened for hiv this is very important and isolation of aids patient is definitely done and initiation of the treatment so the treatment should be initiated as early as possible and screening of individuals within risk groups then profile access so no effective vaccine has been found yet due to very high rate of mutation of the virus so if as the mutation is high so we don't have any vaccine for that thank you for watching like share and subscribe and are ready to read notes are available on instagram link given in the description box